we have MP for Tafiyama Busi, Mr. Bonsis, Jokas of Tafiyama, Mr. We have MP for Lara, Yaman, we all know him, Yaman. We have him here, all of them,
Thank you very much, Dr. Chairman, for that wonderful introduction of His Excellency. I think uh, we will continue the introduction after this. As we identify you, we will continue at the uh, We realize that the Constitution Chairman for what is was sitting in the front seat, so we will not see him. So we have the Constitution Chairman for what is if we are Chairman. Let's see you. Chamaru, thank you very much, Chamaru. Uh, without much ado, we invite the MP for Mass Central, Honorable Dr. Hassan Rashid Bell, to give us the word. Uh, 
we have come together to develop a document that is to be inculcated into the political party on Facebook that is chairing towards the enhancement of education within this country. If you look at this document, it is a five chapter document. We are going to make this document available to you, the ex Your Excellency, so that going forward, we shall allow 2025. We, the teacher unions in Ghana, will have a very smooth and a very elaborate engagement with you as a president. Very important in this document, Your Excellency, if you look at chapter 4. Point one, and it's talking about enhancing the collective argument that we have already signed and also making the uh, improvement of teachers within this country. Again, we also talking about making sure that schools that exist within this country have accommodation for teachers because that is one of the key things that we teachers that is so dear to our heart. Without wasting much time, we make the document available to you. We wish you well and we pray that in Shah Allah, after 2025, we will have to move back in development. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And then CCT Ghana. Uh, this document is taking away with me. And then over to the Excellency, Dr. Amado Mama. Uh, on this note, Tanabuaya Professor Elijah Yendao Utah Rev. Professor Elijah Yendao Utah Rev. Professor Elijah, if you are now, can you come up stage? Your Excellency, there are several other challenges that we face 
days week, but in the coming days, you start coming up with a proposal to support you so that that you see that you have the best opportunity that we will work and hard to show that you step up. Thank you very much, Utah. And you can have a good one.
interesting. <laughs> You're real good. Look at you. Yes, I know you. Fantastic. Jack, Jack, Jack.
We have a midwifery school here in Ando, but we have no accommodation for the students. In education, we must confront the alarming failure rates in our schools. Nandom used to be one of the beacons of academic excellence in all of Ghana, boasting some of the brightest minds to ever come out of this country. Today, we have BC pass rates of 11%. We have schools with no textbooks. The second pillar, economic empowerment of Nando. We are going to know more about how the proposal for a 24-hour economy, what does it mean for places like Nando, where we need jobs and opportunity for the youth. Agriculture remains our backbone, but we must also diversify and invest in areas like the creative arts. We have the unique xylophone, which can be developed into an orchestra and can be globalized as a symbol of our culture's potential on the world stage. We believe there are opportunities for mining in Nando. That we advocate for methods that will respect our environment, ensuring that our treasures today are not curses tomorrow. We are in the middle of a major financial crisis in Ghana. This calls for self-reliance, Your Excellency. And we believe Nandong can assist by producing food and products to help reduce our dependency on imports. Your Excellency, in Nandong we are close to the border. We wish to have a military bank here in Nandong because it will help stimulate a micro-economy. <laughs> Finally, we must honor and modernize our traditional governance system. Your Excellency, the discrepancies in stool land management between the South and the North require rectification. Our chiefs need to be fairly remunerated, reflecting their pivotal role in our society. We plead with you to integrate them more effectively in our assemblies and in policy making processes so that we can ensure that development is truly inclusive transcending partisan interests and embracing the collective wisdom of our ancestors. In conclusion, Your Excellency, we the traditional leaders in Nandong, regardless of our backgrounds or beliefs, pledge to work tirelessly towards the realization of this grand vision. Together, we can and we will transform Nandong and set a shining example for our nation. On behalf of the Nandong Na and the people of Nandong, thank you for taking the time to come meet with us and for showing great respect for our indigenous systems of governance. We bless you and we pray that your visit is successful. Banka. <laughs> On behalf of the Parliament in the Nandong traditional area, uh, it's time to say that it's presenting a cow to our visitor, Honorable John Baman, a president. His Excellency, Honorable His Excellency, George, His Excellency, John Dramani. <laughs> then the cow goes with a smock. The cow goes with a smock. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria. The greatest of the greatest of honor, I wish to present my report to Your Excellency, my coming president, to the Republic.
Thank you very much, um, Your Royal Highness, and uh, my, I call him my uncle, uh, because uh, him and I have had a very, very, very long uh, relationship. He's known me from when I was a child growing up, and so I'm happy to be home. And uh, Maluna, too, is like my little brother, and uh, he and I have had very fruitful interactions in Harvard University has been behind several invitations that I received to go and speak in Harvard as a distinguished uh, scholar and so I feel very comfortable. Let me begin by offering my sincerest apology for uh, um, the delayed arrival that uh, we had and for the inconvenience that you have. Uh, suffered for almost four hours uh, because we could not get here on time. Um, we left Wah on time, on schedule. By 8.45, we had hit the road. But um, you know in this business, there are unforeseen incidents that occur. And one of them was an escapement that was not scheduled. And we got there, the chief insisted on escaping me. And we had to go through an elaborate process my smoke and my walking stick are still in my car. <laughs> but while they're going through that, they don't realize that other people too are waiting for the person. And so I want to apologize sincerely. I think what I'll do is next time when I come for the campaign itself, I will start the campaign from Nando. <laughs> we might notice that any time I come to Nando, I come in the night. And so next time, we'll start with my dog in the morning. And then if you also escape me, I'll reach those other places in the morning. I want to thank uh, Maluna for um, a very um, comprehensive and exquisite you know, presentation he's made on behalf of the Nandong man. It's a very well thought through piece. And indeed, a lot of the points there are some of the points we ourselves are thinking through. As I said, this is a listening for we call it a building gather for because we are picking nuggets of uh, 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 suggestions, nuggets of proposals, nuggets of opinions, so that we can put them in our manifesto. Um, I have at one term to do, which is four years. And so I need to get the ground running. And so it is important that I know exactly what it is I'm coming to do for the people of Ghana within that four year period that I have. And that is why we're doing this so that we can put all that together and synthesize it and know precisely what policies we're going to implement the same day that we do the swearing in at Independence Square, that same afternoon, we're going to the office to go and start implementing the programs for the people of Ghana. <laughs> and so many of the issues you've raised, infrastructure is important, you know, farming and agricultural production is important. And I see that probably this economic crisis we're going through is what I call opportunity in adversity. It's when you suffer adversity that you begin to use your thinking cap. And so right now we're in a situation where we have an economic crisis, we've been shut out of the international credit market, and so we need to think how we can survive and continue to do the things that will bring prosperity and dignity to our people. And that is why food self-sufficiency is important, but you cannot rely for food self-sufficiency only on a part, one part of the agricultural chain. All the time we come with planting for food and jobs, we come with medium term agricultural strategic investment program, all those programs just focus on asking the farmers to produce more. But there's more to agriculture than just production. You have to look at the entire value chain, and that includes agro processing, it includes agribusiness, and that's the part of the chain that is, uh, is, is not there. In uh, uh, Nandong area, all the way to Lampusie, to uh, Tumu, to Guelu, there's a lot of production of maize, there's a lot of production of soya bean. 
But there's not a single processing plant to obtain these commodities off the farmers and process them and prepare them for the market. So as I was coming to uh, Golu and other places, farmers are holding stocks of maize and the market price is depressed. They are selling a bag of maize at 300 cities. It does not even cost, can, uh, cover their cost of production. And so how do we create a buffer stock system where the government is able to give the minimum guaranteed price, make sure that Ghana Exim and all the other for, uh, loan facilities government has is giving to buffer stock to buy this food of the farmers at a minimum guaranteed price that covers their cost. And then preserve that food properly so that at the lean season when prices start going up, you can release it into the market to uh, level the prices. And so these are all things that are coming up in our listening tour, and I'm happy that we came here. I would suggest that Maluna forwards what he read to us. We have a young lady with us, Beatrice Annan, who's recording everything, and so if you forward it to us, we'll give it to her so that she captures it in her laptop, and then you can be sure that some of those ideas will find their way into the uh, uh, manifesto. You cannot have a 24 hour economy without security. And so it is good you raise the issues of security and having, you know, a military post here, having police presence here, because we know what is happening with our northern neighbor. And in many places, refugees are even fleeing across the border to come here. So it means that our whole northern frontier must be properly secured. And so all those issues you raise are in order. Our people cannot go around without armed robbers attacking them. Buses going down south are attacked, the people are robbed. And we've advocated a 24 hour economy. The 24 hour economy can only work if people are able to move around freely at any time of the day or the night. And so security will be one of the important things that we uh, focus on uh, during uh, uh, our period in office. And so I want to thank you for the suggestions that were made. I can assure you we'll take them seriously and we'll include them. And I also want to inform His Royal Highness that two days ago I met the National Executive Committee of the NDC and also the Council of Elders and it was to um, comply with the requirements of our constitution in respect of endorsing a running mate for the 2024 election. And so I'm happy to have inform uh, His Royal Highness that um, the two institutions uh, unanimously endorsed my choice of running mate. And I know he's familiar with her. She's Professor Nana Jane Opokwajima. She's an educationist. She's been the Minister of Education before. And she was the first female vice chancellor of a public university in Ghana. And so, and she's been a teacher. Many students have passed through her hands. And so I know that the issues that you raise with the educational system, our basic school system is virtually collapsed. There's hardly anything happening there. The free SHS has all these inadequacies, poor food, lack of accommodation, lack of lecture halls, and so on and so forth. And because of her experience with education, she will have special oversight for that sector. And I'm sure that she will use her experience to turn things around so that we can stop the 11% pass rate at basic school in, in London. And also, she happens to be a woman. And um, it is the second time a major party, and I'm proud to say that it is my party, that a major party has made a woman the running mate. I did it in 2020, the same person, and I'm retweeting her in 2024. In 2020, we were not successful. But in 2024, <coughs> At, at 2024, I am certain that, inshallah, God will favor us. And that, and that on 7 January 2025, history will be made in Ghana, and we shall swear in the first female vice president of the Republic of Ghana. And I believe that we go a long way to inspire our daughters, I have a daughter, and inspire our daughters, our sisters, that there's no limit to how high they can go. And I believe that sometime in the future, very soon, 
a woman would also be sworn in as the President of the Republic of Ghana. So that we will give meaning to women's empowerment and the fact that women are our partners and not our slaves. And so I pray that um, our big mothers and all of them will organize and support Nana Jinkopoka very strongly so that uh, we can uh, have the first female vice president. And so without much ado, I will thank uh, Your Royal Highness very much. Uh, I know that a few days ago, I think even yesterday, you were in a crowd, you had to hurry here because you heard we were coming. I know the sacrifice you've made to be here to receive us. And I want to tell you that I really appreciate it. And may God bless you long life, give you good health, so that you can continue to lead the people of Nandom in a wise and orderly manner. Thank you very much.
Baby, I need to stay to London FM. So now continue on your path.